Hello, confirmation students. I have some interesting things to share with you today, and those are near-death experiences. And in Father Spitzer's credible Catholic class that he uses with um, confirmation students, he begins the series with near-death experiences. And I have two books um, that I've read on near-death experiences. And you may not know that there's a such thing as the International Association for Near-Death Studies because there are so many near-death experiences. And then this book is only about sharing a loved one's passage from this life to the next because these are called shared near-death experiences. And in this book, one of the stories is about a woman who is dying and her children, three, I think, maybe it was two, uh, we'll say two, two children were waiting at the foot of her bed as she was dying. And before she died, they all experienced um, like a glimpse of her life. And to the point that both of the children who were at her deathbed were able to go back and look at pictures and say, oh, that was her boyfriend and pick out very specific events. And it wasn't as though the events that happened in the near-death experience were foggy they were actually more clear so it wasn't difficult for them to recall them as though it was their memory they they participated in this experience at death in such a way that it was more vivid than like their own actual memory uh, it's estimated by the international association of near-death studies that there are on average in the united states a thousand near-death experiences every day and um these stories aren't just stories that Someone says, oh my goodness, I had a near-death experience. But there are stories like someone died in a hospital and when he came back to life, he said there's a red shoe on the top of the hospital. And they went and found the red shoe on the top of the hospital. Or um, one story in, I think it's in this book, is about miracle healings that happen when someone dies and comes back to life. And one of those stories is about a girl who um, had a brain dysfunction and she couldn't speak right and uh, she drooled and she was electrocuted by uh, lightning hitting a pole and they smelled her skin she she burned so badly and when she came back to life uh, after seeing jesus she explained uh, her brain function was completely better and she had no burns from the the lightning so i mean there's just all these stories that are so similar and I, they are powerful in the sense of what do you do with that? You know, uh, th there's so much evidence for life after death. And now we have uh, the ability to communicate with each other so much more easily through the Internet and different things like this. And so, so many more stories are coming out. But this story even goes back in time uh, to 200, 100, 300, 400 years ago and tells some stories of people who wrote them down as they happen. So it's not just this modern phenomenon. This is something that's been going on for a long time. And some of the interesting things are that there's commonalities in almost every story. So it's not like someone says, oh my goodness, I died and it was purple. And then someone else says, I died and it was pink. But one of the things is uh, people often talk about a, um, a tunnel. That's very common. People talk about seeing people that they knew before. And um, when they see them, they're not either young or old. They're somehow both. That's a very common experience that happens when people have a near-death experience. It is very common for people to see Jesus or to see God. And um, so much so that one of the stories, and this is by the International Association of Near-Death Studies, uh, this uh, Hindu man had a near-death experience in India. Eventually, his family moved to Canada and he went to a church and he said, oh, my goodness, that's the man that I saw in my near death experience. And he became a Christian. Um, but there's lots of these stories that are very interesting. Um, the man who wrote this book, uh, Moody, Raymond Moody, he was going to be a soldier and he had some sort of sickness and he died. And he tried to catch the train while he was dead and he had never been to the places where the train was. And while he was dead, he was at all those places. And then he went back when he was alive and couldn't believe all the things that he remembered that because he had never been there before other than when he was dead. And so this experience caused him to decide to research these things and he was going to be a doctor. And once he started opening the door to this, he said so many people 
uh, that were doctors and such would come to him and say, I would have some stories to tell you, but don't tell anybody else because there's, it's almost like in the medical field, that's, you're, that's not what you're supposed to do. And so once he opened the door for people to talk about this, a lot more people talked about that. So a, part of what I'm trying to do is so many people in our world tend to believe this materialistic idea that this life is all there is. And there's so much evidence that that is false. And Aristotle gave a great argument for it, too. He says, if your mind can hold eternal truths, then your mind has to be greater than eternal uh, or at least have the capacity to hold something that is eternal. If I said I had a bucket that could hold a million gallons, all of a sudden you imagine a big bucket. If I say I have a soul that can hold eternal truths, your mind should go to an eternal soul. That's Aristotle's argument, who wasn't even Christian. But I, I just want you to think about, contemplate the concept that you will live forever and and know that there's great ability for defending that truth. Um, I'll send you another message tomorrow. Sorry, I didn't mean for this one to go so long. God bless you guys. Bye.